Hey everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Trisha and I am a fourth grade math and science teacher. In today's video, I am going to be giving you tips and questions on how to get the teacher job that you've been trying to get this whole time. The school year has just come to an end. There are vacancies all over the world. I promise you with these seven questions, you will get the job that you aspire for and you will blow the minds of the interviewers, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the video. But before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for post notifications, and of course, give this video a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so question number one, why do you wanna be a teacher? What a basic question, I mean. If you can't answer this question, you really probably shouldn't be a teacher. All right, so when answering this question to an interviewer, I usually tell them, from a young age, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I used to play with my brother and sister and we would play school and I was always a teacher and they were always my students and I would always spend that time to be teaching them the things that I learned during school that day. Part one. Part two. What inspired me to be a teacher was as a child in elementary school, I struggled a lot. During that time of struggling, I had this one teacher in particular who really took her time to make sure I understood and I learned the lesson. And ever since then, I told myself, I want to be like that teacher for other students. Part three, I want to be a teacher because I love seeing students come into the beginning of this school year, not knowing much and only knowing what they knew from the previous grade they were in and learning and all of us being able to look back and reflect on all of the knowledge which we built together as a family and that brought us here today. Why do you want to be a teacher? Those are the three parts to how to answer that question. All right, so question number two, this one is a really, really popular question to be asked during an interview. What is your teaching philosophy? So my teaching philosophy, and I'm gonna read it word for word because it's such a powerful statement. It says, every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. And that was written by a woman named Rita Pearson. That is always, forever, will always be my teaching philosophy because you as a teacher, you are the champion of your student. You spend more time with them than their own parents do. So what better person to be a champion and a role model for their students than their teacher? Feel free to use it. Feel free to say it's your philosophy. Feel free to tell a teacher friend about it who may need to answer that question because Okay, question number three. How would you foster a positive learning environment? All right, keep in mind, we don't live in a perfect world. We don't have perfect students. We don't have the perfect school, the perfect administration, the perfect classroom. We just don't have it. It's life, this is how life goes. Things are gonna happen. But here's how I would answer the question. To foster a positive learning environment, I think it's very important to teach my students a routine. I want them to understand that this is where the papers are kept, this is where the pencils are kept, this is where the marker and the glues and all of the supplies are kept. We are one family when we are in this classroom. Everything in here belongs to us. That's how we keep the vibe and the energy in our classroom positive right then and there. Secondly, I wanna take the time to learn my students. If all the boys like baseball, then I'll make all the lessons about baseball for the boys. And if all the girls like cheerleading, every math question will be about cheerleading. Learn your students, make it a positive environment for them. Make them want to come into your classroom, make them want to learn because this day we're learning how to divide baseball players and cut them in half. And this day we're learning how to multiply cheerleaders and make it the biggest cheerleading team ever. Make them want to come to your classroom. Let them know that this is their safe place, but we have to respect it and we have to follow the routines that are in place. All right, question number four. What are some things to consider when making a lesson plan? All right, here is the key to success. When making a lesson plan, you wanna consider what do your students already know? One. Two, what are the learning goals for that lesson? What do your students need to learn by the end of the unit or the end of the week? Three, 
Which of my students have 504 plans that require more time when learning or require frequent breaks or require the questions read to them? Four, what are my students that have an IEP? What are my students that don't speak English as their first language that need to use a Spanish dictionary or that need a translator or don't know English as their first language because they speak Creole and need a Creole English dictionary? Those four things you wanna keep in mind. Last thing you wanna keep in mind, and this is being super realistic with you. Again, this goes back to my not living in a perfect world speech. Five, a fire drill may take place. Someone may be sick. Something may happen. We may have, who knows? Who knows? Leave a little bit of wiggle time to move some things over to the next day or to start a little early on something that we may have already covered. We don't live in a perfect world, so things happen. Those are definitely the five things that I like to keep in mind when planning a lesson. I wanna think about what do my kids already know? What do they need to learn? Who has a 504? Who has an IEP? What if this happens? Do I have time to make it up on this day? Or can I teach a little bit early into the next lesson today so that tomorrow we can spend more time reviewing? Okay, question number five, we're getting close to the end. Question number five, what kind of technology are you gonna implement into your classroom? Each school is different. Each school will not have the same thing, but here is how I would answer the question. In my classroom, I am going to implement the use of iPads and computers for my students to use. I'm going to encourage my students to go on our class website and play games to help them better learn the content which we're learning in class. I'm gonna also encourage my students to use the internet to help them figure out words that they don't know. As it is 2020, we do live in a world where the internet is at the tip of our fingers. So instead of teaching my students all the time to use a dictionary, I also want to encourage them to do research on the computer. Last but not least, I will incorporate a smart board or a dot cam into my classroom so that my students can interact with the lesson. And lastly, if I do have a microphone, I'll definitely use that technology and have a microphone go around the room so that everyone can project their voice nice and loud and we can all hear you even if we're sitting in the back. That is how I plan to implement technology into my classroom. Question number six. How do you differentiate instruction in your classroom for your students? Here's how I would answer the question. I would differentiate instruction by my students by first having them take an assessment in the beginning of the school year to see where they are. From that, it would be a reading assessment, a writing assessment, and a math assessment. Remember, I teach fourth grade. <laughs> okay, so after the assessment is taken, I'll then use the scores to divide my students into four groups. I'm going to have my low, my low average, my high, and my above average students. From then, I will use that as my time for triple I or intervention. Each school calls it something different, but yeah, you know what I mean? So from then I would teach a whole class lesson. After the whole class lesson, students will be assigned independent work. During that time, I'll meet with my students that are considered super high or above average. Each school has their own name for it. I'll pull them, work with them, and definitely give them work of more rigor to keep closing and you know pushing them to a higher level. Then I'd meet with my high students, do the same as well, but they're obviously gonna get their work of reading, math, and writing on a different level. Then I'm gonna meet with my low average students, definitely make sure that they're getting the assessments that they need, they're getting the help they need, they're getting the questions, any questions that they have, they're getting those answered. I may even partner my low average with my high and make them probably buddy up together and work together on the assignment. Then my low students, these are most likely my students who have IEPs. Maybe some 504s, the 504s might be in the low average, but my IEP students, um, I'm really gonna, my tier two, my tier three, that's the ones that I'm going to be reteaching. Reteach, 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 and help them and encourage them and scaffold them through every single question. That is how I differentiate instruction in my classroom. And for question number seven, the very last question is, if you get a job at this school, what can you offer to us? That's a question that you really have to sit down and think about for yourself. Your answer really would be different than mine because I'm stronger at something different than you are and you're stronger and better at something than I am. So if it was me, 
I would kind of answer the question by letting them know, you know, I'm a really good asset when it comes to teaching math and science. So to the school, I definitely offer some sort of after school programs where students can meet in my classroom if it's allowed, each school's different. If it's allowed and give one-on-one -on -one tutoring or small group tutoring to students that are um, maybe on tier two or tier three so that it can better help them and you know close any learning gaps which they may have if your school has sports or clubs you may want to offer the ability to coach a sport or a club if you know how to do that um you may want to offer time doing lunch duty or after school duty those are just some of the things you can bring to a school. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Those are definitely the seven questions that you should probably know if you plan on applying for a job or becoming a teacher for the 2020, 2021 school year. Now with the given circumstances of the coronavirus, right now, if you are interviewing, your interview is probably gonna be virtual. So yeah, definitely think about those questions. Definitely share this video to a friend who may be applying for a job. I promise you, it will help you. I've applied to three jobs and I've been offered all three. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you wanna get as many job offers as possible so then you can sit down and think and make a pro and cons list as to which one works for you. Anyway, that is the conclusion of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below what you'd like me to talk about or do in my next video. And I can't wait for us to grow as a family. Stay safe.